Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. ESP8266 are quite power hungry. This can be a problem for applications if we want to run them from batteries. In which situation does the ESP chip use this power? Which possibilities exist to reduce the power hunger? Are there any tricks necessary? In this video I try to answer these questions. Let's start with the ESP8266 as we know it, as a connected device. For my tests I use a bare ESP-12E module on a breadboard. I mounted it on the breadboard friendly PCB shown in one of my former videos. You find the link below in the comments. The pins are connected as usual. GPIO 00 to high if not in programming mode, GPIO 15 to ground and reset and chip enable both to VCC. For our tests I connect the module via a 1 ohm resistor to the ground of the bench power supply and VCC is connected via my bench multimeter to the power supply. My oscilloscope measures the voltage of the resistor. Because the multimeter and the 1 ohm resistor reduce the voltage, I increase the supply to 3.5 volts. Like that, I make sure that the ESP module always get enough VCC. The multimeter shows the average current used by the module in milliampere. The oscilloscope shows the voltage of the resistor. Because I choose the resistor as 1 ohm, we get a simple relation. The current in milliampere is the same value as the voltage displayed on the oscilloscope in millivolt. So we start with a simple sketch. The blink sketch only without LED. Because the current drawn by the LED would distort our measurement. The Wi-Fi is switched on, but without a connection. The multimeter shows 70 mA with small peaks in the 80s. The oscilloscope shows a completely different picture. Most of the time the current is around 70 mA, but peaks go up to 300 mA. These are the famous peaks of the ESP8266 which can create troubles if the board is connected to a serial adapter without a big decoupling capacitor. The peaks are only one millisecond long and therefore do not increase the average current much. From time to time there are more such peaks because the Wi-Fi module has to send some data. During this period the average current increases to 80 mA. So, the used current increases with load of the Wi-Fi connection. These peaks are a real pain. If you look at the video of Kevin Dara, you see that he uses real beefy voltage regulators just because of these peaks. I post the links to his video into the comments. So, let's do a quick experiment. What happens with the peaks if I connect decoupling capacitors of different sizes directly to the board? I start with a 100 microfarad capacitor. We see no big difference. The peaks are still nearly 300 mA, only a little shorter. The next is a 330 microfarad condenser. Here the peaks are about 200 mA. With a 1000 microfarad capacitor, the peaks are just above 120 mA. And with 2200 microfarads, there are no more visible peaks. So we can summarize. First, if we need a continuous Wi-Fi connection, the ESP8266 needs at least 75 mA in average. This means that this 4 cell battery from a quadcopter project with 2200 mAh lasts about 4 to 5 days if we use a very good switching power supply. This is at least longer than my iPhone, but sure, nothing outstanding. And second, 
a at least 1000 microfarad decoupling capacitor can reduce the peaks considerably. So, for low energy designs we have at least one learning. Use a big decoupling condenser to reduce the need for a big power regulator. Fortunately, the developers of the ESP built in some features to reduce the power consumption of the chip. A look to the block diagram in the datasheet shows that the ESP chip consists of two parts. The Wi-Fi modem here in blue and the MCU in yellow. And the second diagram in the same datasheet shows that the ESP offers four different power modes. The first we tested already. The next we test is the modem sleep mode. Here the blue part of the chip is switched off. In this state no Wi-Fi connection is possible. So we switch the Wi-Fi with the command Wi-Fi.mode off. The spikes disappear immediately, but the average current stays at around 70 mA. We gain probably a few hours. Very disappointing. The chip obviously does not go into the modem sleep mode. Therefore, we need a different approach. The commands wifi.force sleep. The new sketch obviously works. If the modem is off, we see no peaks and the current is about 15 mA. Success! With 15 mA we get a theoretical life of 27 days. Unfortunately, the commands wifi.force sleep did not work with a running Wi-Fi connection. So, for the moment I will not use them actively. The only area they are useful for me is if I want to use my ESP and do not need Wi-Fi at all for my application. If you know more, please post it in the comment. So, let's test the most aggressive mode, the deep sleep mode. The Arduino IDE offers a few ESP-specific APIs. One of these commands is the one we are looking for, ESP.deepsleep. This sounds promising, so let's try this one. To use this command, we have to add a connection from GPIO16 to the reset pin. Not a big deal. And we have to put the command esp.deepsleep somewhere in the sketch. As soon as the sketch arrives at this command, it puts the chip for a number of microseconds in a deep sleep mode. After that time, the ESP restarts from scratch into the mode specified. It loses all memory content and it also does not know where it was in the sketch. If you want to know how to deal with this fact, you can have a look at my video about watchdog timers. I enclose the link in the comment below. But let's come back to our problem, reduce the power consumption. Let's try our sketch from before. In the loop, we call the sleep command and watch what happens. Nothing. The loop continues as if the command would not exist. Only if we add a delay 100 behind the command, it executes as expected. If we look at the serial monitor, we see the first text appear, but loop 2 does not appear. The execution stops and after a while the usual mumbo-jumbo shows us that the ESP reboots from scratch. It writes the two lines and then the ESP hits the high again. The text loop 2 is never reached. Let's look now at our instruments. The multimeter shows two distinct states. One with a current of around 70 mA as seen before. And in the second state, for a long time, it shows a current of only 600 microampere, which is 1000 times smaller. This is very promising. With the same battery as before, the ESP could sleep very, very long. In this mode, the switching power supply would probably use much more current than the ESP itself. For sure, it would suffice for a winter sleep like the marmots here in the mountains of Switzerland. If we look at the oscilloscope, we see the two states. 
if the sketch is running, it behaves exactly as we saw before with all the spikes etc. After the sleep command, there is no current visible anymore. We also can boot into a state where the modem stays off. We just use the value wake rf disabled instead of wake rf default. This has the same effect as the command wifi.force sleep and the consumption is 15 mA if not in deep sleep. We could now stop the video and be happy that we solved the problem. But there are a few additions which could be interesting for you. First, the ESP8266 keeps its status stored. So if you switched the modem off and load another sketch where you do not explicitly switch the modem on, it stays off, even if you use the Wi-Fi mode command. Reset also does not help. During my experiments this led to weird reactions of my ESP chip. But at the end I was always able to get it back to life. And another fact I discovered during my experiments. The current drawn in the deep sleep mode heavily depends on VCC. Because of my layout, VCC was a little more than 3.3V during deep sleep. And the measured current was around 60 microampere. Without the different probes, you should be able to get much closer to 3.3V. Then the current is only 20 microampere, which is closer to specifications of the chip. And the winter sleep would be three times longer. And last but not least, I found a very interesting article of Reiner Ox. He uses RAM in the RTC memory to store data which has to survive a deep sleep period. This is a very important fact because RAM has no limitations as EEPROMs have. In my IoT videos I used the EEPROM to save data during reset. This fact is so important that I plan another video about that RAM. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.